My name is Laura, and today I'm presenting to you this public teams. I'm not a member of a web part, which I contributed to the SPF examples a little while ago. And I originally implemented this as a conference demo for ESPC 2018. And I got this idea from a colleague of mine. And basically the situation went that she was having a conversation on a Teams channel about a certain topic. And then another, another person comes in and says, you know, we've been talking about the same thing in another team. So how about you come over there and let's continue the chat over there. And she was like, yeah, sure. But how I wasn't able uh, aware of this team before this moment. Like, is there some place where I could see all the public teams that are in our tenant? Because if we go to teams and click this join or create team, what we get here are just recommendations. This doesn't list all the teams in the tenant. So, of course, you can go and, for example, start searching for a team and then it returns something to you. But out of the box, there is no place where you could see a list of all public teams in your tenant. So, for example, if you would be interested in marketing, you would know that there is a team where you can join and discuss about that topic. But that web part allows you to do that. So, for example, if I wanted to join this team with cats because I like cats, that adds me to that team. Or at least it should. I'm not getting a demo effect. Yeah, it added me. And then if we refresh this page, we naturally don't get the team here anymore because we are a member of that. And this web part uses Graph for fetching the teams and also for adding the person into the team. And let's take a look at the code. In the end, this is a very, very simple web part. There's like 132 lines of code. It's very simple. Here in the beginning, we reference the MS Graph client for calling Graph. And I've implemented some helper methods down here for both get and post requests. And they use this call Graph method that returns the response. And the requests are done to Graph synchronously because we need the response before we can do stuff with it. And for the web part, we need to assign permissions to Graph. So these are the three permissions that are needed. So when you deploy this web part to the app catalog, you also need to remember to go to the preview version of the Admin Center and go to this API management page to accept the Microsoft Graph permissions before the web part actually does anything. But let's take a look at this logic. So in this render method, we first, of course, need to get the teams the user is not a member of before we can render the list. And that happens in this function. And we can't get that kind of list directly from Graph. We need to first get the teams that the user is a member of, and then all the teams, and then make a difference between these two arrays. And we also need to filter teams based on the public uh, the visibility property, because Graph doesn't allow uh, you to do that directly. I'll come back to these two rows in a bit. And when we have these missing team IDs, or the IDs of the teams that the user is not yet a member of, we create this JSON object that contains the team objects of those teams, because we might want to use all the values all the properties of those teams as well, in addition to the ID, for example, the display name, so we can display it in the web part. And if you would like to display some other information, then you could do that too. And we return the value token from that JSON object, and then render the basic HTML for the web part. And after that, the individual team rows go into this container element. And that happens in this render teams function. So we get the container element, and then we also get the user ID from Graph for the currently logged in user, because naturally we need that if we want to add the user to the teams. And for each of the teams that we um, deduce that the user doesn't belong to yet, we create a row for each of them, then add a button 
to the beginning of the row. And we save the team ID as the button ID. You could just pass this as a parameter later on as well, but I figured might as well store it here because we need to um, use the button element later on too. And then change the button text. And here we add this add member event handler to the on click listener. And at the button, uh, button, we just add a span element that contains the team display name. And in this event handler, we get the source, which is the button that the user clicks, and then the user ID. And we disable the button so the user can't click several times because the user's like to click. And then we change the inner text to join so they feel like, yes, I did something useful by clicking this button. And then we build the body for the graph request that is basically a reference to the user object. And then make a post. And we get the team ID from the button ID because it's the same because we added this in here. And that's basically everything that this web pod does. And I promise to come back to these two lines of code. So yeah, like I earlier mentioned, unfortunately, Craft doesn't allow us to filter groups based on visibility. So you can't add this O data filter visibility equals public here and only receive public teams. What this line actually does, it returns all teams. And when I say all teams, I mean all teams, including private teams that the user is not a member of. So you might want to discuss, if you plan on using this in a customer environment, what you want to discuss with them, is it okay? Like, are your users very tech savvy? Do they have Fiddler? Because if they have Fiddler up and running and they refresh the page, they can see the request going on and the response contains uh, display names for all the private teams in the tenant. So, if you have some top secret projects and your teams have been named according to the projects, it could be an issue. And of course, because it returns so many teams, tenants can have potentially have a lot of teams. Um, this can take a little while, and also, of course, rendering teams can take a while if the user has a lot of teams. So, potentially, this web, web part can be quite slow. So if you have time and want to improve and fix these issues in one way or another, feel free. It's an open source project. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. So there's one more thing I could show you, because this web part is actually built on the SPFX 1.7.0 plus beta version, so it means that it's Teams tab compatible. So um, you know, when you generate this SPFX um, web part project, you get this Teams folder that contains the manifest file and the logo files, and then you put it together into a zip file. And after that, you can install it to your tenant's app catalog in here by uploading a custom app. And after that, you can pin it as a tab, and then it gets rendered in here. So this can be quite useful if you have a team like all company where all the members or the, all the employees in your organization belong to, then they don't have to go to a separate SharePoint site to join the teams. You can see it immediately right here, which is quite nice in my opinion. Any questions? I can get the link to you in a bit and post it in the chat. But this is awesome. in the um, SPFX samples. I think those are JS public content teams. Okay, okay, I'm done. Thanks. Great work, Laura. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.